Hi, this is Karen Overton, the Quilt Rambler, with another episode of 15 Minutes to Ramble and Sew. It seems like it's been a month of Sunday since I've been able to <clears throat> sew something for myself and to share with you. Uh, actually, it probably has been a month of Sundays, and I know if you're like me, we've all been kind of busy. Uh, I have not been making masks, but I have a good friend who made these for me because she knew that it didn't fit into my schedule with so much of the secret sewing that I have been doing. And I can't share any of that with you yet, but I can share with you just a few things that I have been doing. Now, last week was Easter, and so I made two little Easter bunnies uh, one for my granddaughter Reagan and one for me so that when we saw each other on FaceTime I could hug my bunny and she could hug hers. So with that in mind uh, last week I did a Facebook live which oh my gosh that was so nerve-wracking. I mean it's one thing to sit here in my studio and ramble and sew because I am in control of when I do it. If it takes me 10 minutes to get ready or 30 minutes to get ready it doesn't matter but to do something Facebook live you've got this time schedule and oh my gosh that was so stressful. All right so let me start sewing and I'll tell you more about this. This is a little uh, quilt that I made a couple of years ago when I was an Island Boutique Ambassador and I decided last night that it needed to be sewn or rather quilted it's been sewn. So that's what I'm going to do while we ramble and sew. Uh, let me get started here so that I'm actually sewing for a change. I had already uh, put the binding on the back side. I've used a bias binding because if you can see this is a beautiful stripe and I love stripes. So I'm actually going to be machine binding this and bringing it to the front. So that gives me something to sew while we ramble on for the next few minutes. Um, like I said, I made this little quilt uh, in 2018. I was going to look up and see what month it was, but eh, well, doesn't really matter. It was before Reagan was born because she came in the fall of 18. She came right around the time of uh, Fall Market and Quilt Festival. And so um, anyway, I, this was made before then. But it's been a quilt in waiting, uh, what I call my quilts that are pieced and have their backings already prepared. And when I'm doing that, I also go ahead and prepare uh, the binding because it could be years later before I ever get around to quilting it. And we all know that if we don't designate the fabric from our stash for a project, we're either afraid to use it for something else or we end up using it for something else and think, oh crap, I forgot that was supposed to be the binding. So I try to, um, you know, set up everything aside and do that. The other day when I was cleaning up, like I mentioned, I did a Facebook Live. And if you've missed it and you're not on Facebook, I did go ahead and re rebroadcast it or copy it or whatever you want to say and put it here on YouTube. Uh, the problem was is the quality was not really good because it was a copy. And normally when I film just from my phone like I'm doing right now, um, it has a clearer picture and filming from my phone live and then I don't know technology that's why I like just doing it this way because um, you know I still don't know how to edit and and if I if I blooper <laughs> you know you just laugh right along with me right oh my gosh speaking of bloopers this is something that I cannot help I don't know about you guys but this is corona hair and it's been at least three months since I have seen my hairdresser. Who says hair and nail technicians are not essential? I mean, really, if the liquor store can be open, then why can't our churches and synagogues? And I mean, yeah, my hair, that's essential. So as my husband says, I am proud of my humility. And so I am gonna be humble here and go ahead and film because I know when I look down, you're seeing my crown of glory or my skunk line as I like to call it. And no, I'm sorry, I am not going to go totally gray. Um, I worked really hard uh, not to do that. And I am forced to do that like the majority of you. And so I will be humble and accept the fact that I have a skunk line and I will I have already taken a number and stand in line uh, because once my hairdresser is back in service 
oh my goodness, those people are going to be working round the clock. Now, I realize I'm being kind of facetious because in the light of what's going on in the world, uh, certainly my hair and my nails are not a priority. Uh, it's, it's a luxury and that's okay. Uh, what is a priority is my sanity. And like many of you, uh, we've turned to sewing. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, my girlfriend, she's made multiple, multiple, where did my other one go? Isn't this cute? I mean, seriously, it's got a little lion on it. Does she not know me? I mean, little lion Judah and a lion on the fabric. There's so many people out there that I applaud that have really taken it to heart to do what they can during this um, global pandemic of making the face mask. Uh, unfortunately, don't judge me, but I didn't join those ranks and not because I didn't believe in it, but because I already had other obligations. Um, a lot of people found themselves at home away from their real job. Well, my real job is at home and the deadlines and obligations that I already had, those, those didn't change. And so I am very pleased to say that Last week, I got my um, my secret sewing projects are all in the mail to Island Boutique. And even though spring market was canceled because of this uh, pandemic, we're very, very hopeful that fall market will be able to, um, you know, to be a reality and not a virtual reality. Because my designer friends and I, we have seven seven new patterns just out of one collection with Island Batik. And Island Batik offers usually about, I don't know, 20 or more collections each season. So it's going to be really exciting for when I can actually share that uh, with you. Um, I've got a lot of work between now and then because the quilts are made, but I've got to write the patterns and need to get them pattern tested and all that kind of fun stuff. But it's gonna be so much fun when I can show you the fabric line for fall. Now, in the meantime, my uh, spring of 2020 quilt just came home from Island Boutique and spring market is actually not until May, even though we know it's been postponed. Uh, the big reveal is still not until then. And so I have a quilt that I'll be eager to show you in the next few weeks. And in the meantime, I've got to write the pattern for you. Um, so there's just a lot to do. And it's just been um, compounded with everyone uh, having to social distance, um, you know, take turns going to the grocery store. I, I don't get out a lot. Pretty much it's going to church, going to teach. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe the May classes will make. And so my local gals, we had to postpone one in, in April but hopefully we'll be able to do it in May. We'll just see, and if not, you know, we'll postpone again, life goes on. We will uh, do everything that we can do uh, to get together, and uh, it's been really nice to have social media to still talk. It's also been kind of frustrating to have social media because there's almost too much talking, and quite frankly, I, I, I feel like the, the quilt police have had a revival. Um, there's been too many judgmental things going on out there and you know we're all under stress and everybody handles it differently but we don't have to be mean about it you know there's just anyway I don't want to get off on that um, I want to show you a little bit about this quilt now as a long arm quilter you know my, my long arm has been busy with all of my things for Island Boutique um, and it's been kind of fun to pull this out of the quilt and waiting pile. I don't know if you can see this or not. There'll be a close up later, but I have a signature butterfly and I like to put that in my personal quilt. And, and um, so that, you know, one of these days if the label falls off and somebody's saying, oh, did grandma, you know, quilt that or did Oma quilt that or whatever. And I lost it. I had a little thing here I wanted to show you. Oh, okay, here it is. I use this Dritz Mark Be Gone whenever I'm marking on my quilts on the surface. Now, when I'm piecing, my favorite pen, you know, is, is, is the chalk ones. But when I'm getting ready to quilt, I want one that I know is going to wash out. Chalk sometimes either bounces off with my long arm or it takes a, a, a bit to get it out. When it's in my seam allowance, it doesn't really matter. But the thing, the disclaimer about this is uh, it really needs to be 
don't, okay? Um, I spray it with water and it goes away. But, in, but unless I wash the quilt, um, I can't be assured that that, that, that uh, has gone totally away because it gets down in the fibers. It gets down into your batting. Um, so I'm also not a pre-washer. I know the quilt police really don't like me, but like I said, I fired them years ago, so it doesn't matter. I don't pre-wash. And I realize, you know, there's a little bit of a risk. My, my colors could fade, they could bleed, they could, yeah, I know. But when I'm piecing, I really, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I really don't want to have to put it all in the wash machine and the dryer and then have to go press it because that just takes away my piecing time. So I like the crispness of the fabric right off the bolt. That said, when I am finished with this cute little baby, uh, and this is probably gonna be a baby doll quilt um, for Reagan, and um, I mentioned it in my Facebook Live that when I rediscovered it, it was like, oh yes, I need to make this for Reagan. Anyway, when I, get, when I get done with this in a little while, I'm gonna throw it in the wash machine and the dryer. I just believe my quilts are made to be used. And if it's gonna to go to a toddler, it's gonna to get dirty and it's gonna to need to be washed and dried multiple times. The other thing is I like to, to wait and wash everything together because then I know uh, the fabric and the batting and the binding and the backing is all gonna to shrink together. I call that grandma pucker. And that's what I love about my old antique quilts. <coughs> Excuse me. We've had a lot of allergy and pollen stuff going on down here in, in the uh, hot Houston humid area. Uh, <coughs> so anyway, um, so I like to wash my quilts immediately after the binding is done. Now with my disclaimer for that, there's this little product that you can get at the grocery store. And I'm sure there's other brands, but this is what I find in my store. It's called Color Catchers. And it looks like a dryer sheet. Okay, the interesting thing about this is you can throw it in your wash machine with your quilts and it's going to catch those dyes because that's what makes things fade or makes things run is it's loose dye. I don't know the scientific stuff behind it. I quite frankly really don't care. It's above my, I don't want to say my pay grade, but it's, it's, it, I don't, it doesn't matter. I just know that fabrics can run and we want a risk of that, and that's why people pre-wash. But because I'm an efficient quilter, um, as opposed to a lazy quilter, I don't pre-wash. However, I am using those color catchers because they will absorb that loose dye that gets into the water and could possibly reattach itself to my project, which is why you get those little splotches and stuff. And I know the color catchers were probably made for regular laundry. Uh, I just use them with my quilts. And generally, I just use them the first time. Um, you know, everybody has, there's so many people that are smarter than me that have put a lot of information out there on the website, not the website, on the internet, um, that, you know, have a lot of pros and cons and how you should do this. And I'm very thankful for those people because it's good to have references of things. Um, like I said, I'm just, I just sew for the pure passion, the pure joy of, of the hum of the machine. Uh, this, is, this has been therapy. Um, and I know for many of you right now that do find yourself with more hours in your day or your hours have been totally jam-packed because you are working from home and trying to manage a household and a family and homeschool kids and all of these things. We're, we're all in a, in a different stressful time. And I feel like if, if I can just escape a little bit to my little own little corner in my own little room, this is the happy place. And I want to keep it the happy place. And whether I'm... Um, sewing mask, uh, as many of you are, to help uh, mankind, or if you're finishing up a bunch of UFO projects. I have some that actually date back to the 80s. Um, I went through the other day after I did that uh, Facebook Live and I counted how many quilts I have in waiting. And these are personal quilts. 
I still have three customer quilts, uh, but I'm no longer taking customer quilts. These are gals that have been patiently waiting for the last couple of years for me to get their quilts to them. Um, but anyway, I have 37 and now only 36 because I just finished this one and I'm almost to the end here. Um, but I have so many UFOs that it, could, it would take me a lifetime to get them all, get them all sewn. Does that stress me? No. You know, because my favorite quilt is always the one I'm working on at that time. So I just want to encourage you just to, to focus on one quilt at a time. Don't overstress. Don't overthink what's going on in the world. Obviously, you know, maintain that safe distance, wash your hands, all the stuff that the government tells you to do. But don't let it trouble your heart. Um, we've got to keep We've got to keep maintaining a sense of normality. My hair may be a mess, but I can still be normal with my large earrings. That's my trademark. That's what I enjoy. That's what brings me joy is to have fun, funky earrings. So whatever your joy is, find your joy and hold on to that joy. Now, it looks like I have done the binding on this cute little quilt. And I will tell you, I've got a little secret message. You can't see it, but in the quilting, it says, Oma and Big Daddy love Reagan. Now, I'm going to wash this, and then we've been hanging things in a, in a bag on their fence to be able to deliver things to our little granddaughter. And so I hope to get this delivered this afternoon. And who knows what's next in the Quilt Rambler studio. Uh, I've got some, some interesting things coming up. Uh, classes that have been postponed that I'm still working on uh, figuring out how to reschedule things, but life goes on. And thank you for joining me today. It's It's been kind of, shall I say, almost normal to be back uh, sewing with you, my friends. So until next time, stay calm and quilt on. This is Karen Overton, the Quilt Rambler, coming to you again from the Quilt Rambler studio. Thanks and bye-bye.